G'day everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to set the drag perfectly on your fishing reel. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. You hear that? That's the drag. That is what's called the drag on your fishing reel. And that is designed to prevent the line from breaking or the fish from pulling out of a fish's mouth. Now, in my fishing videos, when I hook a fish, if it snaps the line, the first thing people say to me is, your drag was set too tight. When I have a fish that's only small and they can hear that, that drag screaming like that with a small fish, they tell me that my drag is set too loose. So how do I get it right? Well, I'm here to tell you that there is no right and wrong. There is no perfect way to set a drag. If there was, there'd just be a button, drag on, drag off. Because there's no certain, there's no perfect way that needs to be adjusted to factor in the many variables in fishing. The species, the time of year, the species of fish, how big they're going to be when you catch them. That's an unknown. I could have a line in, I could have my drag set for a fish 30 centimetres long and then I can hook one a metre long or I could have it set for a really big fish and then hook a small fish. Now many people think that the drag is designed to stop the line breaking, to stop fish breaking the line and it is on the most part but that's not all it's designed. It's designed to work in conjunction with the fishing rod and this little weenie fishing rod here, I've used this because it fits in the frame but it's not a good example, it's designed to work in conjunction with the fishing rod to not only prevent the line from snapping but to prevent other mishaps such as hooks pulling out of fish's mouths. I lost a big carp just recently when I was fishing in the freeway dam near Wangaratta and the reason I lost it was because I had too much tension on the line. The, the line didn't snap but I was only using a really small hook because I was targeting small fish and I caught or hooked a really big fish. Small hook big fish is a high risk of the hook pulling out and I had too much tension on the line. So does that mean that I had my drag set wrong? No, because what I generally do when I set my drag, I'll set it at such a, a length to know, it's such a uh, it's such a, enough pressure to know that when I strike to set the hook on a fish, I'm going to actually pull the hook into the fish's mouth. So I want it a little bit tight like that. Then when I hook a fish, the very first thing I do is compute in my head, what do I do with the drag? And you'll see in my videos, quite often I'll hook a fish and I'll reach down and I'll loosen it or I'll tighten it. Now, I might hook a small fish and it might pull heaps of line and the drag squealing with a little fish this big. I quickly tighten it up while I'm fighting the fish. In with big fish, I'll quickly loosen it so that they don't break the line and then what I can do is put my finger on the spool or my thumb and finger on the spool like that while I'm fighting the fish to increase the pressure without actually tightening it and adjusting it. Generally when I hook a small fish the first thing I will do I want enough I want enough uh, enough tension on the line to ensure the hook goes into the fish's mouth first. So you, see if the drag's really loose you got to set the hook you go and all you do is you pull line off the drag off the drag like that and the hook doesn't set so you want to have it tight to set the hook so have it tight to set the hook and then with a small fish I'll often loosen the drag even for example this is four this is six pound line say I've got a one pound red fin on it's not likely to break the line but if I don't let it swim around a little bit it's quite likely that it'll pull the hook out of its mouth by letting that fish swim a bit by loosening the drag and giving it a bit of room to swim I lessen the chances of the hook pulling out of the fish's mouth but then there's more factors more things to factor in what if there's lots of snags and stuff around and it can swim into the snags? Well then I've got to tighten it to make sure it doesn't. I've got to balance up the risk of the fish swimming into the snag, the fish breaking the line, and the, uh, the, the hook pulling out of the side of the fish's mouth. There's many things to factor in when you're setting the drag. And this, this same stuff that I'm talking now also applies with bait caster reels as well. They have a, a totally different drag system, but it does the same thing. You put enough pressure on and it pulls the line out. So here's my formula, mine. Yours might be different and that's okay. We're all different. One of the best things about fishing is that there's, uh, there's not just one way to do it. We've all got our own favorite ways. This is what works for me. I like to have it reasonably tight so that when I set the hook, the hook pulls into the fish's mouth. 
When I'm cod fishing, I have it locked tight because cod hit the lure really hard, and because they hit it so hard, if there's any movement in that drag, they'll just pull line straight out and they won't set the hook. You've got to have it really tight when you're cod fishing. But for general bait fishing for carp and redfin and yellow belly, I like to have it quite tight so that I ensure that I uh, hook the fish. And then as soon as I feel what's on the other end of my line and get a bit of an idea of what I've hooked, how big it is and whatnot, within, all within a split second, I then think, what do I do with the drag? I'll loosen it a little bit. I'll loosen it or I'll tighten it a little bit. And then I make the adjustments as I'm fighting the fish. He's on it, he's on it, he's on it. Take it. Got him. A nice fish too. Whoa, he's pulling a bit of drag. Oh, it took me a while to get started. He's jumping all over the place. Lovely rainbow. It's a lovely fish. Only two or three weeks ago the fish were lining up to take my lures but I had things are just getting to that time of year now. The browns have started spawning which is why I'm up here in the rainbow stream. They're not spawning for another little while yet but they're getting ready and that is a beautiful fish. Bring him up here and get a photo of him. Rainbow trout salad, mate. Gone. He didn't take off at 100 mile an hour like I expected him to, but he swam away nicely. I was just thinking about that trout that I caught then, and how one of the first things I'd done when it took off was reach up and loosen the drag. That fish was probably not even a pound, three quarters of a pound at best, I reckon. And I'm using four pound line, and combine that with the bend of the rod, that line probably won't break under the weight of that fish. So why did I loosen the drag? Well to stop the hook from pulling out the side of the fish. When it took off and came up here it went nuts and it started jumping around. With that much tension on the line, it's likely just to pull the hook out through the lip and I'm going to lose the fish. That's why I loosened it really quickly. So why don't I just start with the drag really, really loose to start off with? Because then I may not have got the hook up in the first place. The fish might have grabbed it and swam, pulled line off the drag and not set the hook in its mouth. I started off tight hooked the fish, and then loosened it. I have had fish snap my line occasionally, and I do lose fish like every other fisherman. We all lose them from time to time. But using this technique has worked well for me. Have it firmed, hook the fish, then adjust it as required. And I don't lose too many, just the odd one. I hope this has helped you understand how I like to set the drag and given you a bit of an idea. I hear people talking about, oh, I like to have, if it's six pound line, use three pound drag and different formulas and equations. I don't like to think that far into things. Just set it firm enough to ensure a hook set and then make really quick adjustments as required once I hook the fish. Hopefully this has helped you out and given you a few tips on how to use the drag on your fishing reel. Thank you all very much for watching.